There are times when text wrapping is not the right way to get the result you're looking for. If you want to have an interesting shape to a column of text or an area of text, and it has nothing to do with how that text interacts with an object as we did in the previous video, your approach is to make a different or unusually shaped text box. And this can be done a couple different ways. Um, but let's jump in, design another page, and you'll see what I'm talking about as we go along. So let's add a new page. Go to the Pages palette, and make sure that your last page is selected, and choose Create New Page. And this gives us another page, I'll just zoom out and show you, which would be the, well in this case, the fifth page, if this was the cover, um, this would be the fifth page that we've added. And let's put a background in there to work with. So go to the File menu, choose Place, and in your InDesign Materials 1 folder, you'll see Bruce Lee Yellow Background. Choose that and Open. Now this is a fairly decent sized image, so if you remember, your two choices are click and hold the mouse down and drag out the size you want, or, I'll undo that, Control z single click to have the image appear on the page in its full size. This is its native size. So let's position that at the bottom of the page. Deselect and have a look. So the idea is we want to have a nice block of text that comes down here and wraps in around this area. We don't want to use text wrapping because it could be, well, far too complicated to get the text wrapping to work with these variety of different shaded areas and we did want to control the exact shape of this chunk of text and not let text wrapping do its thing. We want to control that. So here's one way you can do it. Grab the text tool and before we do anything else, let's press the W key. Remember the W key hides all of the boxes and borders around all your objects. So let's turn it on so we can see what we're doing and be able to see a text box even though there won't be any content in it right away. So let's draw a text box about this big. And let's switch to the selection tool. And with the text box still selected, you can see the same anchors in the corners that you're used to around any other shape or object in InDesign. Now, if you were to switch to the direct selection tool, we haven't really used this tool much yet, but here we go. Switch to the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool, its name really explains it all. It allows you to more directly select parts or components at a deeper level. So where the direct, where the regular selection tool selects an entire object and allows you to move it around or resize it, the direct selection tool, the white one, allows you to grab just one particular corner of an object. And you may have to deselect and reselect to get this result. One of the tips you're looking for is that the corners, these anchors, will look like hollow squares. So select one and now you can change the shape of your text box by moving the individual corners. So you can already see that you, even with moving these around, you can start making a pretty interesting shape for your text box without any more knowledge than that. Now what if you wanted more points in this shape? Well, that's when the pen tool comes in. If you don't see the pen tool, look for this shape here, this tool, and right click on it. The pen tool is a family of tools that work with shapes and anchor points to allow you to create almost any shape you can imagine. So if you're not on the pen tool, look for this shape, right click and choose pen tool. Now the pen tool would allow you to basically do a connect the dots and make your own custom shape. Some of the other options underneath the pen tool family of tools is to add anchor points. So if you choose the Add Anchor Point tool and click in a couple spots very carefully right on the border, 
of your new text box, you'll see that you've added two more anchor points. Now go back to the direct selection tool. And then you can grab these points and make an even more interesting shape. Now what if you don't want pointy corners? What if you want smooth corners? Well, that's available as well under the pen tool. And that's under the convert direct uh, direction point tool. I just call it the convert tool because it's a big name. With this tool, you can select a point and the trick is to click and hold the mouse button down and pull away from this point. This will convert it into a curvy corner, an arcing corner. There you go. And you can do this to any one of the shapes you want. The farther away you are from that anchor point and the angle, together can make almost any curve you want. You could do this to a variety of your points and then move these anchor points as well. Now don't move your anchor points with that tool. You move the anchor points with the direct selection tool and use the pen tool or the family of pen tools to add an anchor point, remove one, or convert a point, an anchor point, from curvy to sharp or pointy like this. So back to the direct selection tool, a few more adjustments. One of the good things about the direct selection tool is that you can also use it to move these curve arms and move the points individually. So you can really make a custom shape that suits your choices and what you want to create. Oh, I just moved that by mistake. Okay, let's put some text in our new groovy shaped text box. So you can do, well, one of two things. You can continue this story in this text box, or you can get some completely different text and copy and paste it into the text box. We might be almost out of story here, but let's do this just for um, review. Go back to the regular selection tool and select this last text box in your story. And remember this, you single click on that red linkage handle and then go up to the new text box and click. And that pastes the text into this new text box. Now there's not quite enough there, so just for the sake of interest, let's make this a little shorter so that the text flows into the other text box. That'll give us some space and we can move this in underneath. Yeah, I kind of like that. Looking good. Press the W key. Neat. So you see this a lot in desktop publishing. It's creative, it's interesting, and uh, that is not text wrapping. That's using a text box that you've shaped and molded into what you want it to be using the direct selection tool and the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a really powerful tool and uh, using it in combination with the direct selection tool you can uh, make almost any shape you want. We do go a lot deeper into the pen tool and how to use it in our course on Illustrator. So if you're interested in how the pen tool allows you to create interesting shapes, um, then have a look at the videos on the pen tool in our Illustrator course, and uh, I think you'll get a lot out of that. So there are some other ways to create the shape quickly. Uh, it doesn't give you as much accurate control as the technique we've just used, but let's, uh, let's do this again. Let's select this text box and delete it, and I'll show you a couple other ways to do it. You can use the pen tool right from scratch. Make sure you're in the regular pen tool. So right click, choose regular pen tool if you weren't already on it. And simply click in a shape of your preference. Don't worry about the red. It's just choosing the most recent color we've selected. Make sure you close the shape. So you've clicked around, sort of connect the dots, and you want to finish by clicking on the first anchor point you dropped to close the shape. And then 
with the selection tool, you can position the shape. You can make it bigger or smaller overall. And with the direct selection tool, you can reshape the individual points. Remember, you have to often deselect and reselect it to get individual anchor point control. So you can make some subtle adjustments with the direct selection tool. And you can use the pen tool in the same way. So really all we're doing is making a shape from scratch, not starting with a square text box, which we created with the text tool. So you can click out any shape you want uh, with the pen tool and get going. Another thing to know is that as you're creating with the pen tool, you can single click to get points that are sharp corners. But if you click and hold and drag away, you can get curvy corners right off the bat instead of having to convert them all after the fact. So you can make some pretty wacky shapes with the pen tool, just with that little bit of knowledge. We'll undo that. The last way that you can make a shape that you can put text into and turn it into a text box is with the pencil tool. Now the pencil tool has a couple tools underneath it. It's also a family of tools. Uh, but the pencil tool, if you select it, allows you to custom draw a shape in freehand. So you'll get an unusual shape right off the bat. You'll notice there's a lot of anchor points and this can be a little tedious and uh, cumbersome, uh, but it does allow you to draw something uh, from scratch if you prefer that. The thing to be careful of is that if the top part is irregular, you can get a very irregular starting sentence. And uh, as far as text blocks are concerned, um, no matter how wacky your shape uh, for your text block may get, uh, you'll still want to begin with a good clean sentence across the top or a line of text across the top. So how do you actually put text into an existing shape? Because right now, uh, when you draw with the pencil tool or create a shape with the pen tool like we just did, it's not a text box until you put text in it. Uh, that said, converting it is very easy. So go to the selection tool and uh, let's get that same continuation of our story by using this linkage handle. Single click to grab the continuation of that story and click in the shape you've just created and it will put the text into the shape and convert it into a text box. You could do this with any shape tool, any shape you've created with the pen or with the pencil. They'll all allow you to convert them into text tools simply by clicking with the text tool inside them. So you can see what I talked about here where you've got this little chunk of what they call in the business of desktop publishing, uh, a little bit of orphan text here. And this is just the line that is trying to fill into this little uh, bump here on the top of your custom shape. So how do we go in and correct that? Well, let's have a look at it. Choose the selection, the direct selection tool, the white selection tool. And with this, you can see that there's a lot of anchors here and that there's a little um, irregularity that's causing the trouble. So we really want to have a clean, straight top on this shape. The best way to do this is to use the pen tool and choose the delete anchor point tool. And here you can go in, we'll zoom in, control plus plus, hold the space key down and move, get a good look. Okay, there's a couple of anchor points here. Let's just delete this one and this one. Still a little unusual. We'll delete that one and this one and maybe that one. Now, all we really have to do now is just adjust this so that it's straight across. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Control plus key. Space bar to adjust. So it's just not level across the top. There's this anchor point here and this anchor point right here. So let's just go back to the direct selection tool. And we're going to deselect and reselect to make sure we get just the anchor point. I'm going to zoom really far in here to make sure we're grabbing the right one. And we're just going to grab this anchor point and move it up until it's straight. And let's zoom out and have a look. There we go. So we're straight across the top. That's good. You can see that it is a little tedious to fix that problem if you use the pencil tool. Uh, but it's a trade-off because you do get to use the pencil tool to um, freehand draw a shape uh, in whichever way you wish.
Now, what about the background color? The color just came along for the rye because it was the most recent fill color that was selected as we were working. So you remember that in a previous video, we talked about how you should be careful about not mistakenly putting a background color inside a text box because the text comes right up to the edge and it's not a professional look. So let's remove the background color from the shape we created and then we're left with really nothing more than a really cool custom made uh, text box with a really cool shape. So make sure it's still selected, choose swatches and there you go. You can see that red is the fill color. So make sure it's selected if it's not, if it's on the stroke or the border color, just switch back. And you can see it's on red right now. We're going to go to none. There you go. Close the swatches. Let's zoom out. And we're going to deselect so we can get a look at the shape. So that's how you create different shapes and interesting blocks of text in your projects.